June is here and with the 1st of June it's time for a new release of Home Assistant 2022.6. Today we will be looking at some of the new features of this release, but also at one of the breaking changes. We'll start in a couple of seconds. This video has been recorded on beta version of 2022.6, to be exact, on beta 5. And of course, not all the changes may end up included in the final release version, although since the release is tomorrow, I don't think there will be any more big surprises. So let's look at what's new in 2022.6. It has been almost a year since the Energy tab has been added to Home Assistant. And with this release we now have ability to compare data. Unfortunately, my recording setup has some issues with the data in the Energy tab, so I cannot show you how this comparison looks alive. But from this image you can see that you will have darker data, which is current data, and lighter data, which is data that this data is compared to. So for example, if you compare day, it will be today against yesterday, week this week against the previous week, same thing for the month and of course the year. And yeah, unfortunately you will not be having all the data available for the year comparison. A lot of changes have been introduced to logbooks and they should be more snappier now. But also a logbook will now show as a card on a device or areas page. So let's look at the couple of things. If we go to integrations and devices and for example go to services, you will now see a new logbook on the devices page for the devices, where you can see all the logged activities for that device. Hopefully this addition of logbook into the device page will help you either improve or troubleshoot your system. But that's not all. If you insert the log card in your UI, you will now have updated entities, not just the old entities that were available when the UI was refreshed or created. Same thing goes for the logbook on the left side. If the end date ends in the future, this will be updated as soon as there is a new entry in the logbook, which I think is a great thing because it can help us troubleshoot our systems more easily. Although on the call with the devs last week, they said that this new release is not feature packed and exciting as some previous ones, this functionality alone would deserve its own release its ability to manage application credentials via UI. So what's the typical case for this? Remember, if you've ever set up Google or Amazon integration in Home Assistant, how you had to add in the web service provider web page, a URL that would be called from that service, that would be exposed on your site, you had to add the HTTPS, etc. And there were a lot of issues and pain for the users. The other option, of course, was for you to use Nabucasa. Well, there is now a third option. This service is provided by Nabucasa, but it's non-paid service, meaning anyone, even those without Nabucasa, can use this one here. It allows you to expose your system towards the services that require this type of authentication while still keeping all your ports closed. For example, Withings is one of those integrations. You previously needed to insert parts of the code in your configuration email file, do some things on the application side of that service. Now this can all be done through the UI. And where is this hidden feature? Well, each of the services you will be enabling that requires this type of authentication will show you this during the boarding process. But if you want to see where all your credentials or authentications are, let's go to Home Assistant. Settings, Device and Services, and these three dots here, application credentials. If you have any credentials through the OAuth2, these will be here. If you want to add any of the credentials, just press on a plus sign, pick up the integration that is currently supported, type in your name, client ID and client secret and press create. Yes, this is not something that you will be using every day but this will be very helpful for any integration that requires you to have exposed Home Assistant. And for example, you don't want to do that. I have to be honest, I have maybe once or twice just tried using Scene Editor. Yeah, and I know I really should invest my time and create more scenes in my home instead of fiddling with all those settings every time in the UI, but I never had enough time to play with it and do it right. 
but there is a new change to the scene editor. When editing scenes, it creates the scenes based on the state of the whole device, including all the entities. But what if you want to restore just specific entity for the scene? This has now been introduced, and now you can work with just specific entities for specific scenes or scene changes. With the changes to the calendar integration in the previous release, we now have calendar trigger offsets, and this is something that was asked for. Once again, you can play with the trigger offsets. As with a couple of previous releases, this release also brings a lot of improvements to the performance of the database. From other noteworthy changes, I would like to emphasize on this system health. Let me first show you how it looks today and how it looks in the 2022.6 version of Home Assistant. Currently, this looks like this. You have information about your core and Home Assistant OS, information about Home Assistant Community Store, some of the integrations, cloud, supervisor, and dashboards. But with the latest release, we have one new addition that was something that you had to do by hand previously, and that is information about recorder. All list run start date, current run start date, estimated database size, database engine, and database version. Now you will be able to see the size of your database from within the UI in the System Health tab. Versions lower than 2022.6 have ability to click or tick on and off this preload stream. Now it's not available anymore. Material design icons now have upgraded to new version. This variable in the templates entities can now be used with actions. Improved support for RTL languages, those are right to left languages. Support for media browser as time delta and one change that you probably still haven't got accustomed to that has been once again changed. In the 2022.5 version, we got YAML in the developer tools and people were complaining. So now YAML tab is first tab in the developer tools. As for the new integrations, we have already mentioned application credentials, but we also have some additional integrations such as Yolink, IRXR, Geo Coaching, and some big ass fans. Some integrations are now available to set up from the UI. It's Aladdin Collect, Here Travel Time, and Slack, which means that in future they will be completely removed from the YAML configuration. As for the breaking changes, once again, there are a lot. Some of the breaking changes are really just a reminder that there was a breaking changes two or three releases ago, and in this release you have to remove any YAML configuration for them, for example for the Discord. But one breaking change, this one for MQTT, is something that I want to talk a little bit more in depth. So in version 2022.9, old version of MQTT definition for sensors will be removed, and the new one will be mandatory. In the meantime, you can do it by hand and convert your current sensors to the MQTT version of the sensors. The reason for that is that MQTT entities directly under the respective platform keys, for example, fans, lights, sensors, etc., are deprecated and will be removed in the future versions of Home Assistant. So you have 60 plus days to convert it to the new format. The difference is really minor. What you have to do is create MQTT as a head platform, then put sensor here if you are creating sensor with the name and state topic. If, for example, you would be creating or converting fan, then instead of sensor, you would type here fan or light. Let me show you quickly what is the difference and how easy it really is to convert it. Let's go to my test setup. I have here a couple of currently obsolete and not used sensors that are using data from the MQTT platform. Let's look how we could convert these sensors here to new platform. This here is the old type of the format for the MQTT platform. We have sensor and under the sensor we had platform MQTT, name, state topic. State topic and platform were really the only mandatory fields for whatever you would create. If you would have fan or light, this data is fake here, so it's missing command topic for both fan and light, but it would look something similar like this. We would have sensor with the platform MQTT, the second sensor once again using platform MQTT, same for the fans and same for the light. And after you finish converting, it should look something like this. MQTT, then you have either sensors, fans, lights, and device trackers. And under sensors, fans, lights, you have the individual devices or entities. 
when I mentioned device trackers. Unfortunately, at the time of the recording of this video, so one day before the final release, there are still issues with the device trackers, if I'm not mistaken or the PR for them has just been merged. The problem is that if you would be using the old type of the platform, meaning that you have device tracker, then platform MQTT, then the definition of that platform MQTT device tracker under it, you would receive a warning. But on the other hand, if you would create MQTT, then put here device tracker, yeah, that wouldn't work. But as I said, this should all be fixed until the final release. There are, as I mentioned, some other breaking changes, so as always, before you do any update, check and see if any of those changes influence or impact your installation. And if there are any, don't forget to fix them, back up your system and then upgrade to the latest version of Home Assistant. And this is it for this video about the latest release of Home Assistant. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always leave that comment down in a comment section below. But also feel free to go to the Discord server and the link to Discord server is down in the description of the video and leave your comment there. If you did like this video, please give me a like. If you still haven't subscribed, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the bell so you get notified on the future video updates and of course my streams. And before I wrap up this video, I really would like to thank everybody who is supporting me and has become a YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support, but also thanks to every each and one of you who has been watching, liking or subscribed to my channel. And if you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.